So the market has completely changed, especially if you're an agent trying to sell the listings. You know, there are like hundreds of competition out there. And even in this market, one of my agent is still selling the listing for over 200,000 asking. Yes, that's still a thing, but you gotta do certain things right. So that's why I'm sitting down with him to give you an idea on a step-by-step -step how he was able to achieve those for his listings. And also, you know, if you're an investor, he was getting some crazy deals like, you know, at legal duplex in a Walkerville area, a great neighborhood for under 300,000. So let's find out how he was able to grab those deals, how he was able to sell those listings for good prices. Stay tuned. Namaskar. Welcome back to another video. This is Aditya Soma. If you don't know me on this channel, we talk about real estate investing, real estate sales, you know, how to achieve financial freedom using real estate sales and investing. So today, like I mentioned, you know, we have a special guest, probably you might have seen on the other videos if you have three haven't. times three or four times yeah. <laughs> none other than Clark Galley thank you so much man for being here yeah thanks for having me yeah so you know let me jump into instead of your story because you know we made a couple of videos about your story so if you're interested in tiny homes or uh, learn how Clark made you know 50 plus sales in his first year all those videos I'll put it on the tags but uh, you know coming to this market right like you know the, the market is completely shifted Com from when I started completely yes yeah. <laughs> so you know the, the, the main focus is you know how you're selling the listings right like you're still getting 200,000 over asking mm -hmm. and also on top of it not on that you're getting your buyers a killer deals for you know nice cash flowing properties in good crazy location. crazy deals out there right yeah. now yeah so before we jump in that like what is your projection on the market what do you think happening yeah so I have a uh, I guess a long kind of running joke or <laughs> long running joke myself for the past two months um, is that every time the bank of Canada announces a rate increase I lose two clients <laughs> 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 It's a funny joke I have, but it's actually kind of true. But uh, yeah, basically, as long as the Bank of Canada keeps on raising rates, um, investor sentiment is very, very low right now. Um, I don't think there's a single investor that says, you know, November is going to be higher prices than this month. Yeah. Um, that's the kind of, or December. Or, so my, I guess, analysis on the market is as long as Bank of Canada keeps on increasing rates, um, keep on driving prices down. And uh, I think it's a pretty correlated uh, relationship there. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. I feel the same way. So, you know, tell me, you know, how you were able to sell this list listing for over 230,000, right? Yeah. Over asking. 349 listed, 572 sale. Yeah. 500, yeah. So that's a crazy, uh, because you know, we are seeing hundreds of listings in that pocket. Yes. And probably like there are only every two weeks, probably four or five, less than 10 sales happening in that pocket. Mm -hmm. But here you are, you got this listing sold, completely blew everyone's mind. Yeah, yeah, I got quite a few texts from that one actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, what was the secret? You know, what did you do differently? You know, that you think this listing really got that price? Yeah, I think there was um, probably two or three things that I think really kind of played out mm -hmm. um, really well for me. Number one, it was just a beautiful listing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was a great location. He did really well. We were going back and forth on, hey, should I pour new cement? Should I do the grass? Like, ah, oh, it's a couple hundred bucks there, grand there. And I was like, listen, man, if you want top dollar, you have to do all this stuff. You can get an average house, you know, get an average price, but if you want top dollar, like, you, you it has to be the best one out there. Yeah. Um, so I think his willingness to really put in the time and effort to get that listing to compete with the other top listings, that was huge. The second thing is, and I think it's something we kind of talked about as well. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, there's a lot of listings still right now, a lot of stuff out there. The biggest important thing for me is foot in the door and eyes of the listing. How do you price it? Yeah, yeah, so you price it um, obviously a lot lower than what it is gonna be based off, you know, look at all the sales out there, look at all the listed properties and kind of gauge, okay, where am I gonna fit in this pocket of listed properties? Where am I gonna fit in this pocket of sold properties? Mm. Um, and kind of gauge whereabouts you, you want to be in there. And we could have just, you know, gone in there, listed it at the price we actually kind of wanted or price we were shooting for, but I don't think we would have got near the amount of showings and near the amount of interest. And, you know, bid dates worked last year almost on every yeah. single property. They don't really work that often nowadays unless it's like a drastic decrease and a beautiful listing, beautiful shots, beautifully staged, and just got a lot of showings. I think we got about 40 or 45 showings on, on this property. Yeah, that, that's a solid number, right? Especially because, you know, in this market, listings are getting probably in a week if you get like 10 showings you're lucky yeah that's considered a hot listing yeah. yeah so you know just a little bit i take me a step back like how did you price like you came up with the market value mm -hmm. and you know i know the sellers have a higher expectations because they still saw that two months ago the prices yeah so how did you convince your seller on the listing price how did you came up with the listing price yeah so i have um like i have a few listings right now and i have an old school kind of seller with my one listing right now um he's a clerk bidding wars are stupid i hate them <laughs> yeah the price want for the property less listed which makes sense you know i, yeah. I understand that i'm like hey showing's gonna be a lot less people that show it can be more serious 
Um, but sure, let's go with that strategy. So I have listings like that, but with this one, you know, the seller is open to it. So usually with comparables, what I was doing a lot of the time, you know, last year, um, even earlier this year, was looking back 60 or uh, 45 days to 60 days comparables. Yeah. But now I really look at like seven to 14 days. Yeah, like that's, that's a key. That's pretty much it. So I'll look at seven, seven days, there's nothing there, you branch out to 14. And there were so many comparables listed at 349 that hit anywhere from 540 to like 600K. Yeah. And I was like, look at these three or four properties, a little bit different location, but kind of grand scheme of things, still kind of same class. Um, and I was like, I think if we slot, you know, copy what they did here, that obviously worked last week, why well, it's not gonna work this week. Yeah. Um, let's just copy what we did there, paste it again. And that's- uh, I love that strategy because, you know, you're looking at a very specific current data. Yeah. So that's one thing I have seen, like, you know, a lot of people don't not, they're still looking at two months, one month, three months, yeah. because it's changing every day. And what, what you did, another thing is like the staging is pretty cool. Like, you know, what's your take on the staging? Like, did it really impact on presenting the property well? Yeah, I'm a huge bias towards staging. My seller actually, uh, I do a lot, of, a lot of deals with him and uh, he has a saying that whatever you spend on staging, add a zero to that and that is gonna get added to the sale price. Mm. So if you spend two grand on staging, you're probably gonna get an extra 20 grand for the sale price. Yeah. If you spend three grand, extra 30, it's obviously not science, just kind of rough rule of thumb. <laughs> Um, but uh, I, I generally believe that. I think the staging, actually it was funny enough, there was one listing uh, where my mom was in town. I was like, yeah, was, let's, go see what I'm, let's go see what I'm doing. So she came in and it kind of blew her away. She's like, oh, I never even realized you could put a desk right there. Like, oh wow, like I didn't, <laughs> like, like, I, didn't I was kind of curious what you're gonna do with this space. And then, uh, no, the fact that the staging was there, people walking, walking, the, you know, people are very visual. Yeah. Um, they need to like see it to believe it. Um, yep. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of renters out there that will go rent a property and landlords like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll fix the decks by the time you move in. Instantly the renter is like, nope, he's not gonna fix the fence. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people need to see it to believe it and I think staging just does that to the best it possibly can yeah that's so true man especially like if it's a vacant property you know we, we do deal with a lot of investment properties you don't get an opportunity sometimes the tenants already there mm -hmm. um, that that's insane so you, you presented well you priced it well yeah and and you still had a, a bidding date right yes yep. so how long are you doing the bidding dates like are you giving a week two three yeah I have a rough rule of thumb that I like to do I like to make sure we list the property uh, with enough days for a weekend. So let's say, you know, out-of-town agents, it's really yeah. mainly for them that I do this, honestly. Windsor agents and local guys, they can really go anytime, but out-of-towners are making the trip. I want to make sure this listing pops up on their feed, pops up on their realtor feed before Thursday, before they book their um, showings on Saturday, so that my property is in that list of, oh, we're going out to Windsor, let's make the trip, yeah. let's check out these properties. Like, I need to make sure my property is in that list. Yeah. Um, so it has to get listed in or from Tuesday to like Thursday morning maximum. So it gets in their feed, then they can book the showing for the weekends. The week weekends are pretty big. Open house, we did one there as well yeah uh, and then bid date on the Tuesday it's kind of the rough rule of thumb I like to give there. yeah that, that, that's a very good analogy you know that that's a lot of people don't think it that way like you know before we never used to do open houses because you know yeah. we never needed but now open house and also like targeting to giving enough time for every buyer to come and see the property mm -hmm. so th that's fantastic man like so now the other side of the coin where buyers oh do I still have to pay over asking <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's a tough, very tough question. It's a needed question nowadays on every yeah. property. <laughs> but again, you know, where you have like, you know, sold a bunch of properties in the last couple of weeks mm -hmm. and some of them are really killer deals. I think so. For yeah. the buyers. There's a couple I wish I bought. To be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so can you walk us through like, you know, for example, the one that you sold, I think two days ago, three days ago, the Windermere? Yeah, yeah, that was for, uh, yeah, I've sold that client a few a few deals. This is probably my favorite or second favorite that I've sold them so far. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so duplex for 285K. Duplex uh, for 285K and in Walkerville area. Yeah, on Windermere. It was it was a crazy deal. Not even that much wrong with the property. We got the full five day conditions, financing and inspection. Got, uh, you know, Stefan in there, check on the yeah. house. It wasn't too, too much wrong with it, to be honest. And, uh, so what was the reason do you think you got that deal? Yeah, so I love going after listings that look weird, mm -hmm. that are, you know, agents I don't see that often. Maybe the sellers had it for a long time. Like, why is this property gonna sell at a discount? I think I talked about this in other videos. It's like yeah, my yeah, favorite yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, that property's checked my boxes. There was four pictures, not a single picture inside the house. <laughs> um, it was a Chatham realtor that I've never seen his name before. And the seller bought it for 50K back in like 2002. Like literally the hat trick of what's gonna make this a good deal. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then um, you know, yeah. for the buyer, you know, even though like they have this notion of oh I want to wait for another two days or two months three months four months down the road because yeah. I could get a better deal mm -hmm. but like you know here you go like this buyer got this a Walkerville duplex for 280k yeah um, what was the numbers you projecting to the buyer yeah so the biggest side uh 
thing that I always say, and I was doing this even when the market was kind of on the, on the super skyrocketing up. I think there's a deal in every single market. I think it, you know, you can time the market obviously, which people are trying to do. Um, but if you're actively buying and want to place offers and the numbers work for you, then it's still still going to work, right? So I think, um, yeah, we just kind of went over the purchase price, you know, interest rate, rough expenses. The biggest thing for this one, which kind of scared off like one or two of my other other clients, uh, was that there was only one hydrogen and one gas meter. But during the inspection, I actually missed it. There was a second panel in one of the closets. Oh, um, so there's a possibility to just do the very possible to do a second hydrometer. So easy to be able to split that, split the hydro costs, and then it really worked then. <laughs> it was yeah. like, it was like kind of, because they had to assume the one tenant, the one was vacant. So it's like, okay, pawn tenant, turn over, making money. But with that kicker in there, it was like, okay, this is really making money. So I just said, yeah, went over the numbers and- uh, Yeah, and again, you know, it means are like, it's still, it's not that easy to get a single family under 300. Yeah. <laughs> and getting a duplex in a good location, that's a killer deal in my opinion, because yeah. you know, even if you wait for six months, there is no guarantee that you're gonna get deals like that. Mm -hmm. Whereas right now there is a lot more inventory and some realtors who don't do proper marketing and don't price it properly. Mm -hmm. They don't have enough showings. They don't like if the seller is motivated. Yep. You got like already that duplex. I know nothing really sold at duplexes point of view. Nothing sold under 400. It's pretty rare. Yeah. yeah. I think I, there's another duplex I sold for 365. Yeah. Um, Just only a few deals that we sell, right? Like yeah, not many of them. Yeah, I was going to say it's the other mirror. <laughs> <laughs> that I sold them, yeah. Yeah, but that's the thing, right? Like if you're looking for you know, opportunities, if you're keep looking when the right opportunity presents, you don't have to wait. Mm -hmm. Like that's my point of view. So what do you think like, you know, from your buyer's point of view, like what is your strategy that is working out very well to get them these properties? Yeah, the biggest thing for me really is just calling a lot of listings, right? There's a lot of sale listings, there's a lot of listings out there. Yep. Um, so every morning, you know, I'll look at, uh, you know, the buyers I'm working with, kind of see what they're looking for, then pull a list of, you know, all the properties kind of in that rough range and start hammer down the realtor. Hey, how's activity? Yeah. What's the seller's motivation? What's going on there? And I just get the story behind each property. And as soon as the story sounds good for a deal, I'm like, all right, we'll make note of that one. And then, yeah, you know, every morning, maybe maybe there's none. Maybe that day there's actually yeah. no deals out there. Maybe there's, you know, three or four. Um, so it's, uh, you know, keep doing that until you get a couple of stories that look good and then, uh, then go after them. Love that, man. That's that's what many people miss. It. So, you know, especially if you're an investor or even a realtor, like there is two sides you can learn from here. One, if you're a realtor, keep looking for the deals. There is always like deals pop up. Yes. You, you might have to be a little bit patient, but you got to make a lot of calls. Find out what's the story, just like you mentioned. And if you're an investor, if you're getting a killer deal, why, why the heck you have to wait? If the interest rate go up and if the price goes down, but you're getting that already discounted price and the yep. numbers work great, even if the interest rate go up by another 1%, 2%. And 380, come on, low it can go. Yeah. And the, the thing is too, like it's uh, like, like if you're trying to time the market, like that's so hard. Like I, <laughs> there's no like you really can't. Other than you know, bank bank kind of you know, saying the rates are going up. Like hey, that's what happened the past couple months. It's probably going to happen in the future. Nobody can guarantee that. Yeah. Um, but uh, as long as the numbers work and you're making money, like that's that's what real estate's about. So I don't, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I don't, I don't, yeah. And so most of those buyers that you know buying these deals are they looking for long term projection or just like you know buy and fix and flip? I don't have a single fix and flipper right now because um, I think they operate a little bit different, right? So I think yeah. the fix and flippers are like, hey, I need to buy right now. I need to exit at this certain price. Mm -hmm. um, I can't guarantee them that exit price right now. There's yeah. a lot of clients who ask me and be like, hey, what is the exit price? I'm like, hey, here's data for the last seven days. I can't guarantee you the next four months. That's pretty tough to do, but I'm like, hey, here's the facts right now. Do they work with these today's interest rates? Do they work with, you know, banking on a little bit higher interest rates? I think the long-term investors, they bake that in, but fix and flippers is just, I think not even just Windsor, it's like across the country, across yeah. the world, really. Um, it's, uh, they're all same kind of sentiment. They just can't bake on that AR right now that's a great advice like that's what i'm seeing too right like mm -hmm. personally like if you're a flipper probably you know with the budget 2022 now you're gonna pay taxes even that's so taking that one into account and with the market uncertainty maybe not a great idea but if you're a buy and hold investor who love cash flow mm -hmm. no matter what happens to the market you're still like doing fantastic because you know you have a positive cash flow yeah. and in a good location and if the market continue to go down probably save up some more or go for another one yeah another <laughs> good deal and if it's a great deal like you can even raise money right like go go find a partner yeah no i'm definitely yeah i'd say like new investors um or like investors going for the first few properties they're they're really timid which is right to be self right they read the headlines they see the bank hand out there's a lot of reasons to be timid I, yeah. I totally get that but the investors that have a lot of cash um there's like salivating they're they're like wow i haven't seen deals like this in years yeah exactly <laughs> so they're the heavy hitters are, are definitely about scooping right now um but that's the day average investors and every right every right like so they're just a bit of a yeah yeah and and uh, you know just a final question here for me for uh, any 
realtor watching this, you know, what's one piece of advice would you give them to crush it either selling side or buyer side? Yeah, the buying side, you know, stuff I did my first year, I still do today. Make a lot of calls in the morning. Um, see what seems like to be a deal out there. Go view the property, learn as much about it, better as you can, even better than the listing agent sometimes. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of properties I feel like I know more than the listing agent. Um, <laughs> Very and, good uh, point. Just be the you know most knowledgeable person on, because I mean, there's so many times where a client come up and be like, hey, so like, what do you think of this property? I'm like, hey, here's a video tour, here's the financials on it, here's like my due diligence, here's everything. And I can feed them so much information within five minutes. And it's just, if I didn't make those calls, if I didn't view the property, I wouldn't be able to. So it's that's probably the biggest thing for being a buyer realtor is just having all the answers right away as fast as you can, because you have time to do that. And then on the listing side, it's yeah, make it the most beautiful property you possibly can. Staging, all the photos you can, um, price it as best you can, and feet in the door is a currency right now. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> get as much feet in the door as you can, because that is the most uh, valuable thing. Yeah, very, very, very true. Like, I love that, man. You know, great advice. You know, if you're a realtor, if you got some nuggets from it, or if you're an investor, you know, this gave you some kind of confidence to sell your property or, you know, to buy a right deal. Let me know in the comments below and make sure to hit that thumbs up button and make sure to follow us for more content like this. And if you want us to do more, you know, different topics on this side, let us know in the comments so we can do more content for you so that, you know, you can make a better decisions for you and for your family so that you can achieve financial freedom. So thank you so much, Clark. Cool. Thanks Always, for having me. Uh, you know, great nuggets. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. See you guys in the next video.